Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church. We are so happy that you join us today. And I want to welcome each and every one of you to another Kids Connection program. Today, we are presenting Kids Connection program outdoors. I like when Sabbath comes because I get to spend some time with you guys playing, singing, and participating. And I miss you guys so much. I wish you were here. Today's lesson, we are going to learn something that we should all be doing all the time. So stick around, get ready. We're going to be playing together. We're going to be singing together. We're going to be praying together and having a lot of fun together. And without any more delays, welcome to Kids Connection. Let's sing our song of the day together. Oh, I remember singing this song, the same song, at church with you guys. How everyone was doing all the motions and we had a lot of fun together. I hope you still had a lot of fun singing at home too. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another beautiful day that we get to worship your name. We ask your presence as we learn more about you and your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Do you remember when we went to the streets of Los Angeles last year and we donated blankets and meals to the homeless and people in need? If you didn't get a chance to participate, don't worry, we'll do it again. We were able to help 500 people. Now 500 is a lot of people. 
In today's mission story, we're going to learn about Adra. Adra is an entity of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and what they are doing to help the homeless and people in need in other places of the world. This kind of project was actually created by the government because they need to scale up nutrition and there is a need in Mozambique. Right now, the chronic malnutrition rates are really soaring. They are above 40%. And this is, is generally across the country, although there are certain places where it is higher. In Maputo also, they discovered that it's above 30%, which also includes districts like Bowani. So that's why we feel like it's, it's important that the students should get also part of the meal because they might not be getting enough. When we started, we had our school feeding funded by ADRA International. The other part of the donation was through the food that we are still receiving through Rise Against Hunger. Being part of this project, they receive rice. The rice comes in a packet with soy and dehydrated vegetables. And inside each packet, there is a multivitamin packet within the, the food that we, we distribute. So every time they get a uh, ration size which is almost equivalent to a 700 kilocalorie in supplement to what they get from home. When we started the project we did some anthropometry where we were weighing the height and the weight of the students and we analysed it and then we discovered that 50% of the students were really underweight. That was last year and we are going to consequently uh, weigh the students. Right now we designed a cohort that we would follow up each month so that we have concrete results to see the changes that okay. What we have noted so far has been an increase in the number of students. We started with 9,366. Right now we have 13,453 students. And last year when we ended we had 11,656 students. Now we can help Audra too and the missionaries by going to our website graceandconditional.com forward slash kids connection and find a link where you can donate and help the ministry of helping other people in other places of the world. And if you wish to donate to the Kids Connection program, you can just choose Kids Connection or you can send a check to the church and make sure you write on the check and envelope Kids Connection. Thank you. Now I want to remind you that tomorrow at one o'clock in the afternoon we have something special just for you. We are going to play kids games online via Zoom. So far, we played games like Treasure Hunt, Guessing Game. Last week, we played Charades. That was a lot of fun, and I hope you guys can join us too. Tomorrow, 1 p.m., and every Sunday, just go to our website, graceandconditional.com forward slash kids connection, and click on the advertisement to register for our program. Now, this is for kids only, okay? Now, I like playing games. I enjoy playing games with you guys at home, at church, everywhere. It's so much fun playing games. And today, we're going to play a game right here with In Kids Connection. I'm going to play here, and you guys are going to play at home. This is going to be fun. Now, I want you guys to get ready. Mom, Dad, you're welcome to join in too. Now, today, we're going to play a game called Simon Says. You know how this game works, right? I say something, Simon Says, and you follow. Deal? Everybody knows this game. I love this game. Now, to make it even better, I'm going to call my daughter, Lanessa, to come and play with us. Lanessa, come on over here. So, here's Lanessa. I'm going to give you guys instructions along for, with Lanessa, and you're going to follow the instructions. Okay? Let's give it a try. Simon says, clap 10 times. Very good. Were you able to do it at home? Cool. Now let's try it another one. Ready? Here it comes. Simon says, wiggle your body. Simon says, quicker. Okay, yes, all right. <laughs> okay, now Simon says, jump on one foot. Really good, are you doing it at home? Simon says, jump on the other foot. 
Simon says, stop. Okay. Now Simon says, clap your hands behind your back. Is it hard? Uh, maybe. Okay, Simon says, stop. Simon says, spin around five times. One, two, three, four, five. Make sure you're not gonna fall. You're gonna get dizzy. Whoa, you're good. Excellent. Now, here comes a hard one. Simon says, whistle. We have some birds here at home that they have no problem whistling. They're actually, I, I hope you can hear it, but they're whistling right now. They're singing right now. Cool. Next one. Simon says, jump as high as you can. <gasps> She's even jumping outside of the screen. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! This is fun! Yes! Nice. Okay. Make sure you're not going to fall. Make sure that you have your clear area so you don't you don't fall and you don't you're not gonna hit you're not gonna hit your furniture at home okay okay Here comes the next one Simon says tickle someone oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah I can do that <laughs> okay Simon says stop <laughs> now are you tired yes no here we go Simon says sit down Simon says stand up Simon says sit down Simon says, stand up. Simon says, sit down. Simon says, sit down. Aha. Good job. <laughs> Simon says, tap your hands on your legs like drums. Simon says, stop. Simon says, stand up. Simon says, close your eyes. Simon says, touch your nose. Oh, she almost missed. Did you miss? Simon says, touch your head. Simon says, touch your ears. Simon says, put your hands up. Just kidding. Simon says, put your hand down. <laughs> now, here we go. If you're inside of your apartment or your home, I want you to open the door, open your window, and Simon says, go outside and scream, Jesus loves you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Jesus loves you! I hope you got to do that too. Did you do it? I hope so. Thank you so much to Linissa for participating. Bye-bye. Okay, so we'll call her in if we have to play it again. Now, do you want to take the Simon Says game to another level? Yes? Okay. After the video is over, watch the video again and ask your mom, your dad, or any adult that are, that are watching with you to do the Simon Says with you. Let's see if they can do it. Okay? Now, you might be wondering, what does Simon Says has to do with our lesson for the day? Well, in our classroom video today, we're going to learn something that your teacher is going to share that has to do with someone having to follow instructions. What those instructions were and who gave them those instructions. I hope that you find a way to follow the same instructions and do it. Now let's sing our song of the day again as we wrap up the first part of our program and go into our lesson for today.
Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for another Kids Connection program. Thank you for being with us. Thank you because you give us, you give us the opportunity to worship your name. We ask now that as we learn more about you and your love and what people in the Bible have done, that we learn how to do it and continue to do it in our lives. Help all the boys and girls that are watching this program, all the adults as well. Keep them safe and help us to very soon be worshiping in Kids Connection in person again. Thank you for answering our prayers and for loving us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being a part of another Kids Connection program. I hope you had fun, and we also like to invite you to come and join us again next week for another Kids Connection. Go to our website during the week, graceandconditions.com forward slash Kids Connection. There you're going to find safe activity for kids. You're going to find videos. You're going to find the video, the song of the day. This video, you can watch it again and listen to the story throughout the week. And you can also uh, watch the children's worship story of the week that is also today all this information is on our website and it's specially made for you you're also going to find the link for registration for kid to kid which is on zoom at one o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow and every sunday thank you for sticking around and for being a part of another kids connection program i hope to see you next week for another great program until then be good boys and girls i miss you guys I love you so much. God bless. Bye-bye. See you next week. After Jesus rose again as the risen king, he stayed on earth for 40 days preparing the disciples for their mission called... Commission. Say it with me. Commission. 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 See how there's the word mission and commission? What is your mission on earth for God? Get ready to go to heaven. Help others to get ready to go to heaven too. I think my mission on earth is to be a kind person. And I think it's a golden rule. You do not kind things. Help Jesus. To serve him. Show kindness. To spread the word of God and his love to people who are less fortunate and poor, and don't go to church very much. To obey my parents and to love for your mother. To spread God's message with people who don't know him. That's right, guys. We are to be workers for God, spreading his love and kindness and telling others about him. The disciples had a big job to do. They went as far as they could all over the world telling others about Jesus. Not all of us can go all over the world. But like you guys said earlier in the video, we can be kind to others. We can treat others fairly. We can treat others how we want to be treated. And anytime you have the opportunity, we have to tell people that God loves us, even when we do bad things. Of course, God wants the best for us, and because we love Jesus, we want to choose the right things. We have a friend named Barry who is trying to get to Japan. He's trying to raise enough money so he can be a missionary in Japan. So we're here in the United States. A lot of people know about Jesus here, but we still need to tell others because not everybody understands about his true forgiveness and his true love for us, right? But Barry's going to go all the way to the other side of the world in Japan and stand on the streets and ask people if they have heard of the gospel before. The gospel is the good news of Jesus, that he's the God who created us and took our place in death so that we can live forever in an unbroken world with him when he comes again. And he has forgiven us of our sins. Now in Japan, there are millions of people who have never even heard of Jesus before. So he's gonna stand on the street and tell them and he learned how to speak Japanese. So it's kind of hard to just ask people on the street and a lot of people are gonna think you're weird or scary because sometimes there are people on the street saying, repent of your sins or you're gonna burn in hell, but that's not the message we wanna tell people. We wanna tell people about the love of God and, and not to make them be fearful into loving Jesus, but to love Jesus because of his love for us. 
So Barry's going to give a few second introduction about why Jesus has changed his life and if they would like to know more about him. And if they don't, he just moves on to the next person. The Holy Spirit will help him go to the right person. We have the Holy Spirit to help us be workers for God and to share the wonderful news about Jesus. There is no one like Jesus, no one who loves us so much like Jesus, no one who should be worshiped except for Jesus. And some of the world doesn't know that yet. Not all of us are called to go around the world. I was definitely called to be a speech language pathologist. I felt God's presence all throughout my education. I tried telling others about Jesus' love, and I wasn't very good at it. Mm. There was this one time when I worked at Burger King in my teenage years that this drunk old man showed up to the store right when we were closing, and he needed a ride home, and he was drunk, so he couldn't drive, and so I said I'll call a taxi for him. Well, the taxi driver came to pick him up, and as soon as he saw who the man was, the taxi driver backed out of his car, backed out of the driveway saying, oh, no, 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 I'm not taking that guy. He didn't pay him the last time. So then I said, well, you're going to have to take the bus. So I think the employees and I got him some money to take the bus because he was complaining about the price of the bus. But while mm -hmm. he was there, I told him about Jesus. I'm like, what am I going to do with this guy? And he listened. He was drunk, so I don't know how much he understood. But the, at the end of the story, he said, you're nice. But I don't know if I convinced him about Jesus' love. And another time at work, there was a woman who told me she didn't believe in religion at all. She said religion destroys the world by separating people. And I said, I was saying, come on, Holy Spirit, give me something. What can I say to change her mind? Nothing came to my mind. But the Bible tells us if you tell others about God's love and they don't listen to you, you just shake off your sandals and move on to the next house. And I had a friend who said she just wanted to change one life and save one person telling them about Jesus. And later on in her mind, she thought God impressed her to save two people. She didn't know what that meant until later she became a mom and had two children. Then she understood what that meant. Not all of us can go around the world, but you know what? There's this one guy who doesn't have any arms and legs, whose mission is to tell one billion people about Jesus. He's already told one million people. God has a mission for this guy, Nick, and Nick is commissioned to tell others about Jesus. So we support his ministry. My husband and I got to meet Nick. He came to our church early on in his ministry, and we all lined up to hug him. He gave one of the best hugs I have ever received. And he sincerely loved us just because we're God's people. There is this great show I've been watching. It's called The Chosen. It's not really for kids because there's some violence in there, but if your parents want to see this show, it's incredible. It's the first season. There's eight shows in the season, and episode number three is very appropriate for kids. So um, there's this clip I want to show you, though, about when Jesus goes and tells the woman at the well to spread his good news. Because before, early in Jesus' ministry, he didn't want anybody to know about the people he healed. Remember, he was the humble king. He healed people in secret. But the reason he healed them in secret was so that he wasn't captured yet. Because he knew what was going to happen to him. And he obeyed God, his father, and he followed through with everything he was supposed to do. But he knew that once he started healing people publicly, that there, that he would be captured and crucified. So during the time in secret, he was teaching his disciples. But when the time was right, when the whole world needed to know about Jesus, Jesus told them to tell. And that's our job too. I'm Jesus of Nazareth. We've heard about you. Have you? It's getting too crowded. All these people, word spreading, wrong people stop by.
guys. You asked me before if I knew his name. Now everyone knows his name, and I fear for his safety. By order of Rome and punishable by imprisonment, religious gatherings are strictly prohibited. The teacher known as Jesus of Nazareth is sought for questioning. Until the Messiah comes and sorts this mess out, including me, I don't trust in anyone. This is different. Get used to different. As you know these things, because you are the Christ. I'm going to tell everyone. I was counting on it. What have you come here to show us? There's this book called Guide's Greatest Angel Stories and it's probably more for primary aged kids, but there's this one story I want to share with you guys. I'll just summarize it because how God protects missionaries who go to dangerous parts of the world. So there, there was this pastor and his wife who were missionaries in this part of a jungle. And in the jungle, there were like tribes, not really civilized people. And they were fearful for their lives. Many times they had tried, they um, they, the tribes had tried to kill the pastor and his wife, but they didn't know that. They were always protected by God and his angels until they found out this one evening they were in the jungle and they were probably in a tent and they were very scared. They heard, they heard some strange noises outside and they often heard some strange animal noises outside or something kind of freaky in the jungle in the dark. So they prayed. They prayed over their Bible. They read the Bible together. They prayed to ask for God's protection. But on this one night, it was a terrible sound outside. They were very scared. So they prayed very hard for God's protection over them. And what had been happening outside was there was a band of men who came to kill them. And the man who was sent to kill them said, I fear no God and no devil. I will just kill them. Very bad guy. He was definitely somebody who needed to learn about Jesus. He had never known about Jesus before. So there was no reason for him to be good, I guess. But um, when they went over to kill them, this was while the pastor and his wife, his, the pastor's name was Von Asselt. Von Asselt and his wife were praying. And when that bad guy who was in leading all the bad guys came, he all of a sudden turned back and told the group of men who were all gonna help kill was, run for your lives! And they ran away. And then all of a sudden, the pastor got up from prayer and said, huh, I feel better now. He didn't know what had happened outside until later when he met an acquaintance he knew from the tribe who wasn't a bad guy. But he knew that these missionaries were there to tell about God and a lot of people didn't like that. They were scared. So this was two years had gone by and they never felt fearful for their lives again. And they met this acquaintance who talked to them together and the man turned to the pastor Von Asselt and said, who are your watchmen? And the pastor was like, well, I have no watchmen. And then he says, yes, your, watch, your watchmen, the men you have stationed at your house at night to protect you. And he was, the pastor was like, I have no watchmen, only a herd boy and a cook. They're no watchmen. The man looked the missionary in the eye and he was kind of angry. He said, don't try to fool me. I know you have watchmen and you're just trying to hide it. And he, he asked to look in his house and he said, okay, you may look, I have no watchmen. The man looked in every corner of the small house. Actually, they left the jungle to go into another house later. So that's why they're in the house. Um, the man looked in every corner of the small house, under the beds, between the sheets. Returning to the reception room, he sat down disappointed. I know better. You have watchmen, but where are they? Pastor Van Asselt began asking questions like, why do you think we have watchmen? The man told them of the many times that the tribes from the jungle tried to kill them. 
Every time they came to the house, they had seen two rows of watchmen standing guard, and they had, that they had been stopped from carrying out their evil plan because they were scared of the watchmen. So that one night when they had been praying really hard because they felt very scared, they saw two rows of men that they had seen before um, guarding their tent. Or, and he, he said he saw those strong men standing shoulder to shoulder with swords that glittered like fire. And it made the leader of the killers really scared and he couldn't move when he saw them. But he ran backwards. And he, that's when he ran, run for your lives. So he said, where are your watchmen? And Pastor Von Asselt said, I have never seen the watchmen. And then the guy asked him, and your wife has never seen them? No, my wife hasn't seen them either. And then the man from the tribe said, but all of us have seen them. How is that? Then Pastor Von Asselt went on to the shelf and picked up his Bible. Holding it in his hands, he said, See, here is the word of our great God, in which he, his promises to guard and defend us. We firmly believe in the Bible. Therefore, we do not need to see the watchman. You do not believe. Therefore, the great God has to show you the watchman in order that you may learn to believe. So definitely God sends some special protections around people who minister to others in difficult parts of the world. But like you guys said, in our lives here, we can just be kind and show God's love through our own actions. And when we grow up, God will have a great plan for us. Okay, and now we're going to go into the craft. And the verse that you need to know is from Mark 16:15. It says, this is Jesus talking, go into all the world and preach the good news, the gospel, to all creation. I'm going to show you how to make a megaphone. My mom wrote the verse on it. First, you need a cup or a paper. Or... Second, you make holes in the cup and put it in. And don't forget to cut out this. You need like half a pipe cleaner or some sort of string. And I cut out the bottom of the cup. I poke two holes with a small screwdriver. An adult will need to help you with that. And then you're going to add the handle in the holes. And then on the inside of the cup, you can bend it over so it will stay in there. And there you have your megaphone. You guys, it's been great worshiping with you again today. And thank you for your participation in this week's video. It made it much more fun. But before we go, we're going to have our prayer. And if you have your band-aid board on your refrigerator or somewhere in your house, please continue to pray for the names on it. And also, we have a lot of blessings. And I hope you can find many blessings throughout the week. Um, knowing that God's presence is there with you in various ways. And so here's our blessing tower. It's growing really big, so we have two of them. So you guys can pray about the many blessings you find throughout the week. And we also want to thank Jesus for forgiving us and dying on the cross for us and conquering this world for us. He was born to die for us, for you, because he loves us. So that's why we're here, to spread God's love and we want to pray for the courage and strength to do that, to be ambassadors for Jesus. Please bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for rising from the dead and overcoming death here on earth for us so that we have life with you in a perfect world soon. Please prepare us for your coming and give us the courage and strength to tell others about you. Please help us to know what our commission on earth is for you. In the meantime, please help us to show kindness to each other, make the right choices, and find ways we can spread your love. Please be, without, through, please be with all of these children this week and continue to keep their families safe and protected from the coronavirus. And please help us to meet again soon. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Goodbye.